There's a river of God in this house tonight. And that river has so much power in it. This isn't the river we have to cross. This is the river that comes to us. And God, help us to understand tonight there is a river. In fact, I want to read Isaiah 44, verse 3. That's the first scripture that I'd like for us to touch on tonight. The Lord saying through prophetic flow here through Isaiah, the day will come. And by the way, anytime Isaiah prophesies, pretty much he's talking about people on this side of the cross. He's not talking about people that are here after the after the tribulation and all that jazz, after the rapture. He's talking about us. Even when he's, when the Old Testament uh, prophets talk about the saints of the Most High God, they're not talking about some people yet. They're talking about us. Anybody that's received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior has become a saint. Now, you don't act like a saint sometimes. But even if you don't act like it, you still want him. He's made you become a saint. How many of you know that? you got to get the difference sometimes between your actions and your position. But you know what? You ought to love God so much that if you know what your position is, you'll make your actions flow in line with your position. You know, God, since Jesus has made me a king and priest uh, unto the Father and unto him, then I need to start living like a king and priest and quit living like a beggar. You know, I, I need to start living on who I am now through Jesus Christ, not what I was before I knew Jesus. That's why God said to them when they came out of Egypt, he said, you know, now that you're in the land that I brought you into, quit living like you were in Egypt. You're not slaves anymore. You're not in bondage. Some of y'all keep having pity parties as low as me, and you keep rejecting yourself, and you keep condemning yourself, and you keep thinking that what they did to you that hurt you is still uh, active in your life. And you've got to understand something. Jesus Christ, through his blood and grace, brought you out of that land. You're in a new land. You need to start living in the promises and not living in your uh, uh, past. In Jesus' name. Isaiah 44, 3 says, For I, the Lord says, will pour water on him who is thirsty. You see, there is one condition. You need to be thirsty. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you've been drinking, but you need to quit drinking anything else and start drinking of the living water. Right. Some of us, we like diet cokes and juices and all kinds of stuff that people drink. Some people drink stuff that's way beyond what I would drink. But you know what, Lord? I want to start drinking of the living waters because that's the one that gives you life. And he restored him. He says, I will pour my water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon my descendants and my blessings on, on your offspring. How many of you know that some of the people in here who cry and weep almost every day because you've got loved ones, especially children or grandchildren, that have either left the Lord or refused God or hate God or they're bound up in some kind of lifestyles that are contrary to the righteousness of God and you've been weeping and crying and some of you have been paining yourself because you blame yourself for not being a good dad or a good mom or a good example and God said, I want you to stop weeping because I'm about to do something for the people that you've been weeping on. Uh, I'll give you a promise real quick. Jeremiah 31, 16 says this. God says, refrain your your uh, your uh, self from weeping, your eyes from weeping, refrain your heart from your eyes from tears and your heart from weeping, because I'm about to honor your work. Your work is this: to be righteous and stand up for Jesus Christ. That's your work. And He says, "I'm going to reward your works, and I am going to go get your children, grandchildren, or whoever they are, out of the land of the wicked, and I'm going to bring them back to the right land." Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 31, 16. You need to write that down. It isn't how much you cry, it isn't how much you beat yourself and say, God, I'm so sorry I, didn't, I wasn't a good mom or I wasn't a good dad. Or let's say your husband messed up your kids, you think, so now you're still blaming him. Or your wife messed up your kids or your kids messed up your kids. It doesn't matter who messed them up. All I know is God says, I'm going to go get them for you. And I'm going to bring them back to the land of the righteous. Amen. How many of you would praise the Lord just on that one? Amen. 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 Uh, see, God never, God never loses contact with his people. They lose contact with him, but God knows where they are. Amen. And he's going after them, and you need to start rejoicing. You're going to see some of your loved ones come to the Lord while you're alive. With your own eyes, you're going to see God restoring your sight. Hallelujah. And so that's what this verse says. But in Psalm 65, would you go there if you want to? Or it might be up on the board. It, it is. Aren't you glad that they bring the Bible to you now? Some people don't even know what a Bible looks like. They, oh, by the way, a lot of people use these electronically. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You have one, Pastor? That's okay. Uh, when I was growing up, though, it was a sin to read your palms. But now it isn't. You can read the palms. You can read the palms. <laughs> I don't think the Lord cares how the Word gets out. Just get it out. 
my sons are great preachers. They have three sons, and they all preach the gospel. And they can preach out of this one, they can preach out of that one, and they preach out of their heart. And they, they do great. I can't do the electronic one yet. I don't know if I ever will be. But in, in Psalm chapter uh, 60, uh, I think it's chapter 65, verse 9. Let's read this. You visit the earth and you water it. Some of y'all have been so dry the last few weeks, last mm. few months. Your mm. circumstances, your challenges, your trials, even your own walk with God seems to be so dry. It's so matter of fact. It's so chopped up. And God says, I want to come and water you. I want to start a new flow of life in you. You know, he's not even angry at it. He's not even going to punish you. But he wants to heal us. There's something about water that brings healing. And he says, I want to visit the earth with, and water it, and you greatly enrich it. Talk about the Lord. You visit the earth. The river of God is full of water. The river of God tonight is full of water. There's enough water in the river of God for the whole world right now to drink of it, and it still won't go dry. Mm -hmm. God, teach us how to drink out of these rivers. Listen, most of you have the well. See, if you're saved, if you just said, Jesus Christ, you're my Lord, I confess you as my Savior, and I have you inside of me, you've got the well, so you've got some water. Mm -hmm. But it's sad to just live off of the well mm -hmm. when God wants to put rivers in you. Mm -hmm. This church has been called not to be a well church. It's been, it's been called to be a whole and well, physically, spiritually, emotionally well, that way, good condition. But this church is no longer a well where people just come and drink and then they go home and they're thirsty again. This church has been called to be a river church. This church is supposed to let the waters of God not just flow inside of here, here and dip it, dip it every Sunday we come here and every meeting we come and get to drink some more refreshing water. No, God says, I want this church to have a river flowing out of it to every part of the regions mm. where the life of Jesus can change circumstances, change governments, change people, change society change the educational system. We do a lot of picketing and marching and complaining and griping and criticizing, but God, do you have any more people that will just let the river flow and let the river bring the healing? Mm -hmm. In Jesus', Jesus name, name, because that's what God wants. In Psalm, this is the main verse I wanted to kick into tonight, Psalm 46. Psalm 46, verse 4. Thank you, Jesus, for the river. There's a river whose streams this river, this river, Brittany, this river has thousands of streams that pour out of it. This is a gigantic river, brother. This river is from, from God himself. And this river, the Bible says, there is a river whose streams make glad. I don't know what's been bothering you, what's been saddening you, what's been discouraging you, what's been buffaloing you, what's been confusing you. I don't know what's been causing you to feel less than less than a, 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 a valuable person. I don't know what all that's about. I don't know if it's physical stuff, emotional stuff, mental stuff, financial stuff, family problems. I don't know what it could be bondages and, and habits that you're in that you wish you could be free of. I don't know what it is, but I know this, there's a river Amen. whose streams. Brothers and sisters, there's a stream out of this river, God, that'll touch any kind of place in your life right now that's out of order. I don't care if you have 50 kind of strength, uh, things in your life that's wrong. There is a stream that has an identification to heal that one. And God, let the streams begin to flow. And by the way, who do you think the city of God is? Do you think it's uh, Jerusalem or do you think it's New Jerusalem? No, the city of God is where God dwells. Where does God live? In your heart. Do you know that you've become the city of God? I understand the natural Israel and the, and the physical Israel, and I love that, and we need to honor that, and we need to believe God still has his heart on them. But I want to tell you something. He has a spiritual Zion as well. Amen. And God, there's people in here that they need some rivers and streams flowing into their city because right now some of these cities in here have been sad or discouraged or disheartened, mm. maybe disappointed. But God, let your rivers flow in here tonight. Can I ask you something? And I've and I got to be careful how I say it because... I don't want it, but, but I, I hear the Lord saying you need to quit damming up my river in your life Amen. with how you see things, with how you define things. Some of y'all, you read too much medical knowledge, and so because you read too much on that, uh, every, you, you have a problem with everything because it's a medical issue. God says, don't damn up the streams anymore. Let me bring healing. Let me bring it in a supernatural way. I feel mm -hmm. these supernatural miracles. 
Don't box your children in because the psychologist says they're going to have this disorder all their life and really we need to put them on medication. Mm -hmm. Even if you got them on medication, don't feel bad about that, but don't let that uh, diagnosis or prognosis dam up the rivers of God that will bring healing to your family. Mm -hmm. Don't settle in for everything somebody says about you just because they're a professional. I would rather have the prophetical Jesus touch me than a professional doctor touch me. Mm -hmm. We need the prophetical tonight, people. Mm -hmm. We need something supernatural, hallelujah. And God, we, we believe for that tonight. You see, there's basically three types of rivers that, that I think are prophetic rivers um, in, in Scripture. And one of them, and I love talking about this, one of the rivers is the one that comes out of you. The Bible says, out of your belly. Anybody that's a Christian, now listen to me, I, and, and you especially need to believe that you're not just saved, but you're, you're, you're redeemed by the Lord, and he also put his Holy Spirit in you, and you need to start believing. Now, some of y'all, it's hard for you to do it because you don't believe in speaking in tongues, and so you don't want people to think you're filled with the Holy Ghost because that's for tongue talkers. Being filled with the Holy Ghost is not for tongue talkers. Mm -hmm. It's for men and women who need power beyond physical ability. Mm -hmm. We all need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid of that. Start saying, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says in John 7, 38, out of your bellies, out from within you shall flow rivers of living water. God, let something happen in us, Shelly, tonight that you heal us of all the living stuff. We've got a bunch of living stuff. Let the healing waters of God heal us and let living yes. stuff come out. Amen. Well, let us not be the complainers of the world, but let us be the praisers in the world. Yes. Let us be the ones who proclaim instead of, instead of complaining, God. Let your rivers right now stir up in these people. Let there be a, let, 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 let my young men here that I've met today and, and some of the young ladies here, Annie, get your gun. Let, it, let us know that there's rivers inside of us. Hallelujah to God. And Lord, we thank you. We're going to let those rivers loose. It doesn't matter what our condition our body's in, Julie and Joyce. It doesn't matter what condition our body's in. All I know is there's a river in me. And I'm going to let it flow even through my uh, 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 physical body, even if it's sick. I'm going to let it flow through my distorted mind. That's my wife. She knows about that. I'm going to let it flow through my mind, even though it ain't right sometimes. But God, there's a river. Amen. Let the river. What, what's the name of this city? Crystal River. Whoa, river. River, river, river. Crystal <laughs> River. Yes. That means clean, don't it? <laughs> Lord, stir up. The stagnation that's been inside of some of my beautiful friends here. You're going to heaven. Listen, just because you don't let the river flow, that doesn't keep you from heaven. It just keeps a lot of heaven from you. Amen. Start letting the river flow. Amen. Oh, no, John, I don't want to be a fanatic. Man, you better be in these last days. You better not be a normal Christian. Normal Christians are going to have a rough time. Normal, natural, and neutral. New, 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 new. We've got to be exceptional through Jesus. Amen. There's another kind of prophetic river that's here tonight in this place. And that is the river that flows from the thresholds of the temple. And that's in Ezekiel 47 1. It says, Out of the thresholds of the temple, the river began to flow. Watch this. In the name of Jesus for this church, the river began to flow. And when it flowed, it started out that Ezekiel and his vision and the prophecy, he was ankle deep. And all of a sudden, the river kept flowing. It didn't stop after Easter Sunday, it kept flowing even through Christmas. And even through the summer holidays, even when people are on the lake fishing when they should be here, the river still flows. <laughs> but you see, uh, the river, the river started flowing and it got up to his waist and then it got up to his uh, knees and then it got up to his waist and then it got up to here and then all of a sudden he had to swim. God, let there be a river in this church in Jesus' name starting this season. I release the rivers of God in this place and let it flow so much that it'll overwhelm this city. It'll, it'll run over the barriers and the walls and the hiding places and the places of secret sin. Let the rivers that come out of this place, God, overflow the dark places of this city. And when they flow there, let life happen. The Bible said everywhere that river flowed, truth started living, things started living if, if that river touched it. God, do something in our lives here tonight that we won't touch things and they die. Mm. Heal us from that touch that everything I touch dies. Lord, from this day forth, whatever I touch through Jesus Christ, let it live. Mm. Let so much life come out. Lord, heal me from being so theological. See, the problem with some of you, you're too theological. You've got all this doctrine. You've got all these scriptures. And you know what? Sometimes you don't heal people with a lot of verses. You heal them by releasing Jesus. Amen. 
It's the Jesus of the verse. That's the sons of Stephen, man. They had the system, but they didn't have the power. Mm -hmm. They got tore up by the demons. But no, we don't have a system. We have a power. Let us not make Jesus so cool. He's not cool. That's what's wrong with the modern charismatic church. Jesus has to be cool. He's got to be laid back. He's got to be, he's got to be like accepted. Jesus, we ask you to forgive us, and may we let you be who you are and quit pigeonholing you into our doctrines and our philosophy. Amen. Let us let you be alive again. God, in fact, let this church let God do some strange and unusual things that we've never seen before. And we may call them crazy, but my God, will ever there will be miracles happening. Let us do that tonight. Let us not make Jesus be four square. Amen. Amen. Or Nazarene, or Baptist, or Presbyterian. Let's let him be Jesus. Don't make Jesus be only the Lord who you think maybe failed you when you were a little girl or a little boy. Don't, don't limit Jesus to that anymore. Let him be mm -hmm. Jesus. And then there's a river that comes from the throne of God, not only out of the temple. See, it, it should be flowing out of this ministry, and it's going to increase. But there's a river right now that's coming straight from heaven out of the throne of God into this place where we are right now. River's flowing in here. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about it in Revelation 22.1. It says it's a river that is crystal clear and it brings life. Everywhere it goes, it brings life. God, let that river of life flow. Let the streams begin to flow again. As I was praying several days about this message and when the Lord gave it to me, he began to share with me some streams that he wants this church and your church and your ministry to receive tonight. Prophetic streams, not pathetic. I had a guy that was so excited we were coming to their church. This was a few years back. It was our first time at his church, but he had been to several of our meetings. And, you know, the prophecy flood and words of knowledge, words of wisdom, things like that. And that's wonderful when that happens. But he was so nervous that we were his guest speakers. And he was up there, uh, Brother Ricky, he was up there just, you could tell this guy's going to mess something up. He's going to say something wrong. He got up there and said, oh, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, I've been in several meetings with this man of God. And, He's one of the most pathetic ministers I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's your R? <laughs> oh, man. So, you know me, Shelly. I got my Bible walk up there. Yeah, bless God. I have a word today. I'm so pathetic. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Jesus, help us. There is a stream about to flow in y'all's lives. This isn't just for the corporate church. This can be cared for. This is for, I'm trying to say TJ. It's not. It's RJ. DJ. It's huh? DJ. Yeah, DJ. Oh, yeah. Uh, radio. Radio discounts. Yeah. There is a stream of holy fire. Mm. We don't like fire usually. I don't like getting close. You can get burned that fire. You know that. But this is a holy fire that's coming back to God's church. And this holy fire, listen, it's not a tormenting fire for us. It's going to torment the demons that have been tormenting you. In Jesus' name. This fire isn't to burn you. This is fire is to burn up what's been burning you up. God, let the holy fire come back to your church. The holy fire that shows the very presence of a God that refuses to be controlled by nature. Be controlled by religion. Let the holy fire that burns and purges out any kind of sin and residue and leftovers in my life where somebody touched me and dirtied me and shamed me and I've carried it around all these years knowing that Jesus has redeemed me but somehow I haven't gotten free of it, God. Let that fire come tonight Amen. and burn that stuff out of me. Burn away all the dross and any memories in my life that bring any kind of shame or disgrace. Lord, let the holy fire come to this place. Some of y'all need to ask God to bring the holy fire to you. He won't burn you, but he'll burn up everything that's been contrary to your life and to your walk with God. Let the holy fire of God burn away demonic forces and powers and entities that have tried to hinder churches and their ministry. Let the holy fires of God come into your ministry and burn away all the, all the uh, undergrowth and the religious grass and stuff that's trying to choke out mm -hmm. the life of God. Yep. Lord, bring your fire and burn anything in me that's not of you, Lord God. Jesus. Let me be pure before you, God. Mm -hmm. 
send that holy fire here for some people in here that love God and, and they're going to go to heaven but they still have bondages and, mm. and, and habits mm. and places in their life that are unclean and yet they love you with all their heart well praise God if God wants to play music uh, do we have music going anywhere? how did God bring holy music? maybe I should have said holy music <laughs> but that's okay, it doesn't matter might be somebody's phone going off Surely it's not Charlene. Charlene wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, I have to take a break now. No, Charlene, you can be glad you're not in the revival I was in uh, six years ago up in Virginia. They had 40 young people in the front row. These kids were on fire for God. They didn't sit back and try to chew gum and do all the crazy stuff in the back. They were up front. So when this one kid's phone started ringing, I went up to him and grabbed it before he could answer it. I answered it. Hello, who's this? He said, my name's Billy. I said, Billy, this is Evangelist John Jenkins. Larry couldn't answer the phone because he's so mesmerized by my preaching. He's, he's in the zone. He, he can't even talk right now. Can you call back in a couple hours? I'm sure he'll be out of it by then. Yes, sir. Hug it up. <laughs> Man, people started going, oh, you in big trouble. <laughs> that kid called Larry after service. He said, Larry, I'm coming to service tomorrow night. That guy is awesome. <laughs> and he did come to service. Amen. Are you the idiot? No, I'm just kidding. Help me, Lord. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that a new stream of holy fire is coming. Mm. You know, we don't have to get fiery ourselves. We don't have to create fire. God hates false fires. Amen. Amen. I think it grieves God when we go to churches and we see people trying to create the glory, mm. trying to manifest the glory, trying to manufacture a glory. I think it just really grieves God. You know, strobe lights and vapor isn't going to make it. <laughs> Come on. I've been in churches and preached that had the strobe lights going, you know, they're trying to get disco Jesus there. And, and, uh, vapor. And I said, man, if I want the vapor, I'd brought one with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no there's no power. There's no power to our gimmicks. Amen. I want the authentic. Yeah. I want the real fire God show. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's a stream. A prophetic stream of God that's going to bring divine destruction. Hear me carefully. It's not you. God will never destroy you. He didn't come to destroy you. In fact, let me share this verse while I'm on that. John 10 10. We use it at funerals all the time, and sometimes we use it a little bit out of context. Well, the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's about all you know about that verse. Mm. But you, you always forget to quote the last part. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. listen to me carefully. When Jesus quoted that verse, when that verse was being quoted, it wasn't saying that the enemy's doing that. It was saying that's why he came. You guys need to quit saying, well, then you know how the enemy is. He kills, steals, and destroys. Yes, there's things being killed and destroyed because of sinfulness and whatever. But Jesus said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I stopped him before he could do it. I Amen. Before you hear me, Amen. I have come. And not only have I come, I came not to accept what he did. I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly than anything he could take from you. Mm. Lord, help us to realize today that you're the God who destroys the enemy, not the enemy destroy your people. First John 3 8 says, For this reason, for this purpose, was the Son of God Himself manifested in the earth that He might utterly destroy all the works of the devil. Bar all the works of the devil. You mean the ones that He's done on my children and grandchildren and in law? Yeah, all the works of the devil. You mean the one where He took life and He's He's taken our money, He's taken our joy, all the works of the devil. You mean even though I have cancer in my body, Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. A L L. That's right. Amen. And the, the, the verb there in the Greek actually means to utterly destroy, which means to undo, outdo, and overdo anything Satan's done. Yep. Yep. Quit asking God to just make you feel better. Amen. 
My God, let Jesus come into my life today, into our family, into this circumstance, and let him utterly destroy anything that is not of God. And utterly destroy my wrong attitude. You see, there's a divine destruction that's about to happen, brother. Mm -hmm. And God's about to destroy entities that have tried to hinder and destroy this church. No, he's not going to destroy people. You know, even your worst enemy that might be filled with 5,000 devils, you think. God isn't here to destroy them. He's here to destroy the powers that control them. Amen. If you start loving them again and asking God to heal them and, and have compassion on them, you'd be amazed at how God delivers them. Don't ever pray for God to bring fire down on somebody. It won't Amen. Work. He doesn't bring fire down on people. In Jesus' name. But God, I want to thank you. That you came to destroy all the works of the devil. Right. In fact, Hebrews 2.14 says, Inasmuch as the children, talking about us, flesh and blood, have taken on flesh and blood, even so likewise Jesus himself took on flesh and blood, that through his death, through his death, he might destroy the one who has power over death, that is the devil, that he might bring deliverance to those who all their lifetime have been subject to bondage because of their fear. Jesus coming here tonight and healed men and women of fear. You know, there's some men in here who get up and, oh, I'm not afraid of anything. That's a lie. But Jesus healed us of any fears. Because some of y'all are afraid to let God have your whole life. That is a fear, you know. Mm -hmm. You're afraid you might make you do something crazy. But God, heal us of any kind of fears that somehow hinder us from moving forward with our full life. Because that's why Jesus came. To destroy he who had H-A-D, which is past tense now. He had the power of death. But he doesn't have the power of death anymore. I, I, I know I'm going on bunny trails here, but somebody needs to hear this. Even where it says that you, people talk about, well, you know, I want to walk with God, I want to serve God, but you know how many of you, he's up there before God, and he's the accuser of the brethren, and he's probably accused me of a lot of things. That verse has nothing to do with you. Satan's not in heaven anymore. He don't even want to go near that place. That was a one-time deal before the cross. Satan can't even enter into the heavens. It says he was the accuser of the brother, but he's not. he can't accuse you anymore. God won't listen to him. That's right. Amen. Even in the Old Testament, God says, Balaam tried to curse you, Israel. He tried, they, he tried to put a curse on you, but I wouldn't listen to him. Mm. You're my people. He said, not only that, I turned his curse that he tried to speak on you, I turned it into a blessing for you. People, listen to me. If the enemy tries to speak against you and tear you down and, 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 and harm you or hassle you or hunt you down or threaten you, you need to understand something. Jesus right then would love to just turn it on him and give you a blessing that he even tried to uh, bring a curse on you. Don't receive everything. You, know, you, may, you may be offered poison, but why are you drinking? You don't have to drink poison. Drink the living waters. If you'd be drinking the living water, you'd be too full to drink the poison that Satan offers you. So God, I want to thank you. There is a divine destruction that's about to destroy everything that has any kind of power against this church or against my life personally, against my family. Don't give up so easy, people. Don't give up so easy on God. There's a, a stream of, of righteousness, righteous judgment. And this is, this is kind of similar. 1 Peter 4, 17 and 18 says, For the time has come, and I believe we're in that time, brother. The time has come for judgment to be <coughs> at the house of God. See, we're praying over all the bad people, we think, politically, and those people that are mm -hmm. out there doing all that crazy stuff, and we're saying, God, bring judgment. You know, I, I think God sometimes cries and says, Would you let me bring the judgment I need to in your midst first? Yeah. Now hear me carefully. Mm -hmm. The judgment that God brings isn't a judgment to punish you and put you down and imprison you. The judgment God brings is a righteous judgment that wants to set you free from things that have been judged in you. Even Daniel in the Old Testament said this, and he was talking about us. He said, for the ancient of days has come, and he brought judgment in favor of the saints. I want you to know God's in favor of you. And he knows you sin. He knows you've even looked at him with anger and falsely accused him. He knows that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
But he doesn't bring judgment to damn you or to harm you or to demolish you. He brings judgment to set you free. And in the, in, the, in the Greek there, or in the Arabic, when Peter prophesied this, he wasn't saying God's mad and he's going to bring judgment to his church. He was actually saying in a fulfillment, he said, even as Daniel prophesied, even as the Old Testament guys prophesied about judgment, it's come, the time has come for the judgment of God to begin at his house. The judgment of God is the righteous judgment that sets us free from any, any condemning judgment so that we can move forward in the things of God. It's a righteous judgment. It's not even against us. It's against what's been against you. Get on God's side for once in your life. Don't think he's against you. He's not against you. He's for you. Amen. And God, let your judgment come to my life. I'm not afraid of judgment anymore. Because God, every time you bring judgment to me, there's always vengeance and vindication. Vengeance is that God starts healing me. God starts meeting our needs. And the enemy hates it, but it doesn't matter because God's taking vengeance on the enemy of my life, not on me. Don't you dare think that because you're going through a physical thing that's not being healed right, that God has vengeance on you or he's punishing you. That is not true. God cannot be tempted with evil and neither will he tempt you with evil. He sent his son to become a curse so that you don't have to take the curse and he'll never curse you with a curse. Mm -hmm. Get that right. God doesn't afflict people with sickness. He afflicts people with healings. <laughs> and that's not the right word to use. <laughs> There's a stream of heavenly warriors. God's about to release Bruce and Debbie. God's about to release heavenly warriors. I believe in angels. But, you know, I don't want an angel like that guy on. It's a good, uh, what's that Christmas movie? It's a wonderful life. I don't want no sissy angel, Jane. Clarence. I've got a dress on. <laughs> oh, man, God, if you don't send an angel to me, he better be masculine for me. Oh, man, an angel. <laughs> He said, you need one. <laughs> but listen, some of y'all are getting worn out trying to fight your battles, trying to work it out, trying mm -hmm. to find a way to make it right, trying to fix your, you know, some of you moms and dads, not love you very much, but you're wearing yourself out trying to fix your renegade, rebellious teenagers. You can't fix them. You gotta let God do it. Yes. Let God heal you and encourage you so that you can trust God while he does it. Mm-hmm. But God, send your warring angels over this church. Send your warring angels yes, over this Jesus. city. Send your warring angels into their homes. And let your mighty angels fight. If you could ever find any of the Egyptians, you won't ever find them because they didn't make it to heaven. But they'll tell you what warring angels are. Warring angels will carry your chariots apart, take the wheels off, spook your horses, and drown you. If you ever find that servant of Elisha up in heaven that was blind, he, he, he looked around that morning and said, my God, we're all going to die. There's, there's hellish uh, uh, warriors everywhere that are against us. The enemy against us is so great. And, and Elisha came to him and put his hands on him and said, God, heal him and open his eyes. Let him start seeing that his warriors, his angels are far greater than the demons that are against him. Quit saying things like, God, I, I, everybody's against me and I don't even have any. God, forgive us. We have angels assigned to fight for us. Amen. The Bible says the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Amen. The Bible says, for God says this, I will be an enemy to your enemy. I'll be an adversary to your adversary. God, open our eyes today, Vanessa. Open our eyes and let us see that there's not one day, even when I don't feel good, I feel ugly, I feel depressed, I don't feel like I'm getting out of bed. But when I get up, God, let me know there's far more that's for me than anything that could be against me. Amen. Let me have the right attitude when I get out of bed. Amen. Instead of saying, good Lord, good morning, let me get up saying, good, good morning, Lord. <laughs> let the angels of God Assigned to fight for you. And God says, I want you to rest. I don't want you to fight. Mm. See, some of y'all, even when you go into the throne room of grace, you go in with your weapons and dressed up like your mighty warriors. And I honestly believe, and I've never said this before, but I honestly believe God wants some of you to take your warrior outfits off and go in there in your love <laughs> outfit. Have you ever thought about just going into the presence of God just for love and saying, Amen. I see something, demanding something? God, heal us. Mm. And let us know you didn't ask us to fight. You asked us to believe that you're fighting for us. Amen. That's a phrase of 
angelic warriors flow into our lives this year. I love it where God said to uh, Daniel, he said, and this is Old Testament, by the way. I'm going to do about half of these tonight, and then we're going to finish it tomorrow night. That's how because you and I don't have the time for me to go through this whole thing that God gave me, but I don't want to cut him short either. So if you can come back tomorrow night, that'd be awesome. That sounds like a stream, don't it? But it's not. God said to Daniel, uh, the reason your prayers haven't been answered is that the princes of Persia have been withholding or withstanding your prayers. Mm. And then the Bible says that God sent Michael. He said, man, I'm tired of messing with this. I'm going to send the big boy. It's not wrong for you to ask God once in a while. Say, God, send the big boy. Don't send Clarence. <laughs> I need Michael, God. send the big boys to fight for you this year, brother. And when they get done, there won't be anything left of the enemy's offense against you and your house. Mm. Mm. God's going to restore families, relationships. There's people that come to church that, you know, they, they look good together, but at home it's like in house work. So the same song is, and when this battle's over, you will wear a crown. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the crown I put on you. <laughs> oh, he's, uh, okay. Now, you're so beautiful, and I love you. I looked at her walk up, she just smiled at me like I was somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Bella. See, we're not Old Testament. This is what we're trying to get across to people. God is, Jesus is, he said, if you see me, you see the Father. So I'm not talking about God being different than he is because God's always been a loving God and a compassionate God. There's no difference between God and Jesus. You know, Jesus said, if you see me do all this stuff, it's my Father. But I am talking about some of the laws and regulations and rules that happened in the Old Testament before, before grace came to give us what? A better covenant. A better covenant. Amen. And one of the things I know through the better covenant is I don't pray through the air anymore. I've heard people say, my prayers don't get higher than the ceiling. I said, why are you praying through the ceiling? <laughs> you know, the Spirit of God lives inside of you. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Mary, Jane, and Mary, Jane, and Jane, and there's probably another Jane in the house somewhere. Is there another Jane in here? We've got Kelly's, we've got... Anyway, enough of that. So, he's saying that now that we have Jesus Christ within us, and the Bible says because you received Jesus, he sent the Spirit, the Spirit of his own Son, Jesus. That's the same Spirit as Holy Spirit. And he's in us crying, Abba, Father, I mean, my own personal daddy, God, I don't have to just pray through Jesus. I thank God for the name of Jesus, but now I'm one of the sons like Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to pray through the air hoping that my prayers will get there one day. As soon as I pray it, it's done because I'm praying spirit to spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus' name. Quit blaming God for holding back on you. And don't think there's some power between you and God that's greater than he is. He wouldn't allow that. He would strike that thing down in a second. But he has to heal us of our own imaginations. We imagine this stuff. No. God, let us know there is a prophetic river and stream right now that is ready to bring answers to our prayers immediately. I believe that there's going to be, Brother Rich and Robin, Robin, right? There's going to be some instant tadas coming into your ministry. There's going to be some, and then it happened, and, and now it happened. 
God, we thank you that we've been faithful to pray and we've interceded and we've prayed and labored and prayed and thank God for people that have prayed. But God, this is the day where you need to bring the quick answer. You need to bring now the evidence of our prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't want potential prophecy anymore. God even said it in Ezekiel 12. He said, what's this proverb that all these guys around Crystal River are doing? I'm paraphrasing that, you know, right? <laughs> what is this proverb that they give to me, the Lord said to Ezekiel? He said, that they always say, well, that's for another time. God will answer it later. The prophecies that God gave us isn't for now. We have to, we have to suffer. We have to pray. We have to wait because it's not for, and God says, tell them to quit saying it. I'm going to put that thing to rest. I'm going to bury that prophecy. Let them, that proverb, let them know that I'm coming in this day, and when I prophesy, it'll happen in the day of which I prophesy. Lord, let us quit prophesying about what you want to do 10 years from now. Let us prophesy by the spirit of revelation what you want to do right now. Let us know what God's saying and prophesy that. Amen. You know, that's true. We, in, in fact, I, the Lord says this in one verse, uh, Luke uh, 21, 15. He says, for the day has come, Kelly, and Kelly, we have more than one Kelly in here, by the way. Do you know that? How many Kellys are in here? Raise your hand. Boom. And, and, and brother? Is your name Kelly? Nope. nope. Oh, I like Kelly. You, you were just identifying. <laughs> what was I saying before? Before I rudely interrupted myself. <laughs> I, I do that sometimes. Help me out. Luke. Thank you. This is how I don't even listen to that. <laughs> Even my wife, she always thinks that she's a. <laughs> I love her so much. Woo! She's got half a lip on four of the lenses. <laughs> Luke 21 15. In this season, I'm going to give you a mouth of wisdom. Amen. Most of us have had the other mouth. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Let's be honest. You've used your mouth for things that weren't very wise. I'm a saint. Are you? Oh, you're a saint. You sure are. You're, you are. She's a saint. She's listening to the message. But he says, I'm going to give you a mouth of wisdom. That even when you speak, those of you that think you got to go get a special prophet or special prophetess or some man or woman that has superpowers. Still, he says, I'm going to give you a mouth of wisdom. And when you speak out of the wisdom of God, not out of the opinions, not out of Sunday school lessons, not out of history, not out of your track record, but you speak the wisdom of God that he's speaking to you now, he says, even your enemies will not be able to argue with it. In Jesus' name. And they won't be able to refuse it. That's what we need, y'all. I want that wisdom, dearest Pastor Liz. I want that wisdom that when I speak something by the power of God, there is no power that can stop it. There's no power that can even argue with it. It has to happen. Some of y'all need to let God convince you that when you pray over some of your renegade family members that you, that's broken your heart, you need to understand that when you pray over them, you speak the wisdom of God, it has to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're looking for somebody to come be your rescuer, and God says, I'm giving you the power to break it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Some of y'all need to quit being puffed at it, and you need to become prophetic. Mm -hmm. Amen. Is that okay to say that? I mean, I, I think I just hurt 5,000 5, people. Say it, again. say it again. Say it again. We need to quit being puffed at it, and you need to become prophetic. Mm -hmm. We need to quit here. We've got, we've got to get let go of hearsay and gainsay. I don't care how many good preachers you listen to on TV or that I listen to. I don't care what they say. I love them and I pray for them. I want to know what he said. Yeah. I've never healed anybody of a disease yet in the name of Ken Copeland or Joyce Myers. Uh -uh. In Jesus' name. Or T.D. Jakes. Yeah. Or Amy Simple McPherson. One name. <laughs> there's only one name that heals. There's one name that forgives. There's one name that restores. There's one name that redeems. There's 
one name that puts it all together. There's one name that breaks the power of hell, and that name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Unless we have that name. Amen. It's sad when some of y'all use that, that name in vain. Mm. And that doesn't mean God says, I hate people that curse. He does hate us. If he's not hate us, he hates for us to curse. But using the name of Jesus in vain isn't just cursing and saying his name in a, in a phrase when you get mad. Using the name of Jesus in vain is speaking his name and not letting the power that's in that name have its way. Oof. That's just as much vain as it is cursing. Jesus let the prophetic river start flowing in this place again. Would you stand? sing a song, uh, Mary the River. Do any of you remember that? Yeah. Ellen, do you think you could get the keys on that? Do you like that song too, Vanessa? Yes. There is a river that flows from God above. Yes. Right? There is a fountain that's filled with his great love. I remember you, Brother Blue. You're an awesome man. What's your name? Yeah, good to see you. Come to the waters. Come to the water. There's a vast supply. Well, there's a river of God tonight that'll flow from one God. Pastors, what do you need in your ministry? What do you need in your personal life? What do you need in your body? There's pastors that are giving their whole life to Jesus, and yet they're being afflicted in their flesh. Mm. And I believe Jesus isn't the kind of guy that says, Good news to you. Thank you that you're going to do it anyway. I, I, I just thank you that you're suffering. I think Jesus wants to heal us. Amen. Of all the people he wants to heal, it's people that belong to him. Mm. I think sometimes you guys maybe think, and, and a lot of people do, that, well, Jesus is more concerned about me trying to win a soul out there than he is about me. No, 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 no. Jesus will never bypass you to get to somebody that doesn't know him. He's been wanting to do miracles for Mickey for a long time. He wants to do miracles for you because you love him and you confess him as your Lord. And he knows if he does miracles for you, you'll be far more valuable for him when you are out there. He doesn't want to overwork you and make you work for him no matter how you feel. He doesn't want me to have to hype myself up to have a good testimony or a good uh, attitude and, 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 and I go home and I'm all depressed again and all messed up. There's people in here tonight, and I'm going to say it in love, you've been fighting depression a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. And there's even a few that, that have to take medication for it. And God says, I love you. He's not against you. I want to tell you, God wants to come in here tonight and heal people of depression. He wants to take out inward conflicts and afflictions that somehow cause our minds and our emotions to go down on us. He's not even disappointed in you, people. Listen, he's not disappointed in you. If you understand God at all, he's not disappointed in you. He's appointed to you. Amen. To be your rescuer. Something's about to happen in your life that's going to change so much of who you are. You're going to wake up having victory in the morning. You're going to be able to, somebody in here, there's at least two people in here who haven't been able to sleep good at night because of the oppression or the vexation or, or the, the demonic forces or dark powers or bad dreams, nightmares. You know what? God's going to stop that in the name of Jesus, whoever you are. God's healing you right now. He's going to stop that and give you peaceful, sweet sleep again. Because, not because you're ignoring everything, but because he's healing everything. Hmm. I don't think there's any real, I, I don't know, but the Lord just brought to me. They call them bleeders, people that sometimes will just cut themselves. Because they feel so unworthy, they feel, feel so unloved, and they feel like they need to be afflicted. And there are people there, especially the teenagers, but there's adults that do it too, that cut themselves. And Jesus says, I was cut for you. I want to heal you and, 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 and take away that thing that makes you turn on yourself. I want to bring you out of that self-destructive 
attitude that you're not loved and nobody cares. And there's somebody in here you, you felt like in the last few weeks, God, you have forgotten me. And I'll tell you, it's something that you're even here tonight. And I praise God for that. Yay for you for getting here. But can I just tell you, there's a river. Everybody, let's look at me one second. There's a river, and it has your name on it. You know, it has your name on it. Um, Liz, right there in the corner, right? Liz, it has your name on it. Let's sing it together, and then we'll have a response. Today.